Is that what you got? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're really breezing through this. All right, good. Um, so how do you know you can use the small angle approximation? Well, I think we talked about just like a pro as a problem solving trick. If the problem is dealing with vertical distances, they probably want you to use this formula. And if the problem on the screen, if the problem is dealing with theta, they probably want you to use the other. Well, you can really use this when lambda is much smaller than d. But here our lambda is in nanometers and our d is in micrometers. So it really is much smaller. But just as a problem solving trick, if, if they're not focusing on angles, if they're focusing on the vertical distance between the spots, they probably want to use this formula. Looks like you have that memorized. So lambda is bigger than, than d. When lambda is much smaller than d. Oh, so. oh yeah, that makes sense. But like I said, you hardly even have to have that memorized because um, just as a problem solving trick, if the problem dealt with angles, we should probably use the sine theta version. But if the problem deals with vertical distances between the spots, that's a strong clue they want you to use the small angle version here. And it looks like you're remembering that for multiple gradings, you remembered how to find the distance between the slits. So since we have um, one centimeter split up in between 5,000 slits, uh, each pair of slits gets this much distance. So that's the kind of thing you almost always have to do. All right, I guess we might as well do the last part. Should be one or more. that the, the jump could either be from 3 to 2, and then from 2 to 1, or straight from 3 to 1. Yeah, that's a good analysis. And it, this is for the same, for the same yeah. thing. So, you said 1 was... ground state for hydrogen, right? And those are all in electron volts. So basically, so You have 108.8 times 0.6. Okay, so. Oh, they're divided. Divided by H. And then whatever it is over C. Okay, let's go ahead and do the remaining calculations.
what did we get for that answer? Oh, did you do the calculation? Go ahead and do the calculation. I think I'll do the other ones. 1.14. Okay, good. And how many other wavelengths will there be? Okay, I think you got that. So, you, you, yeah, you just do between 2 and 3, and between 2 and, uh, and 1. Yeah. yeah, so how would you get started there? How would you get started on this transition? I just subtract 30.6 from 13.6. This one here? Oh. Well, which one did we just do? Oh, we just did this one, right? We just did the big one, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, so uh, so how, yes, yeah, so let's go through that. How would you do this one? So 30.6 minus 13.6. Right, and how about this one? Um, 132.4 minus 13.6. And I think you know how to take it from there to get the joules and define the frequency. Okay, so that's enough of that problem. It looks like you definitely are getting that. And uh, let's uh, check the answer there. So we got that one of them was 1.14 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay, and there would be two others. All right, I think that was a good problem to summarize these energy transitions here. You're pretty sure to see something like this in the test, and you can see how they can tie this in with diffraction, too. Okay, good. All right. Okay. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is wwwfreelance teacher dot com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box by the way i also offer tutoring via skype and you can find more information about that skype tutoring service at my website thanks